Hey, what's up guys? I'm Theo Joe, and let me ask you this. Have you ever looked at your keyboard and thought, you know, there are some keys on here that I don't know what the heck they do and I've literally never used them. That's what this video is about. We're gonna go over some special keys on the keyboard that you probably never heard about because they're pretty much forgotten features. These include scroll lock, the pause break key, the system RQ key. What do these even do, if anything, these days? It's actually pretty interesting, and I think you guys will like this. Starting off with one of the most popular ones that everyone's heard of but never actually used, the scroll lock. What is that for? Is it for scrolling? Kind of, I mean, as you can imagine. So basically, in the old days, when many operating systems were really text-based, you would oftentimes use the keyboard keys, the arrow keys rather, to navigate the cursor instead of using a mouse. And back in those days, computer screens were not very big. So there wasn't a lot of text to be shown on there. So you really had to scroll to see everything, unlike these days where everything's on the big monitor. But the question is, wait a minute, if you're using the arrow keys to move the cursor, how did you scroll the whole window? And the answer is the scroll lock key. So what you would do is you would press the scroll lock key to enable it, and then you would use the arrow keys that would scroll down the whole page instead of just moving the cursor normally. And obviously this isn't really used these days because you just have the scroll wheel on the mouse. Although it does actually function in Microsoft Excel. If you press the scroll lock key and use the arrow keys, it will move around in the spreadsheet instead of moving around the cursor to select cells. So that's really one of the very few programs I've ever heard of using the scroll lock key but it still sometimes is used. Next up is the SysRQ or System Request Key that's usually labeled below the Print Screen Key on the same one. And you've probably known about the Print Screen Key but never even noticed and ignored the rest of it. Now what the SysRQ key used to do was allow you to send a low-level command directly to the operating system. So you could press it, type in some sort of command to do something back in the old days. It's really an ancient key that is never used for anything anymore. In Windows it doesn't do anything and there's no standardized use for it in any programs. Although it is possible for a program to be programmed so that it does use the key for something, but there's no standard to know what it would be. However, there is one exception, which is if you're using Linux. It's called the Magic SysRQ key, and what this allows you to do, specifically when you press Alt SysRQ and plus some other command, it allows you to send a command directly to the operating system and bypass whatever state the operating system is in. For example, if it's frozen or something, or it's being very slow, you press a command with it, it's gonna go directly to the operating system and do something such as restart, ignoring any other stuff that's going on. So typically what this would be used for is, like I just said a couple times, if the computer is frozen and you restart it with the SysRQ key, it'll still use the operating system to restart, so it's not gonna corrupt anything that's going on. The operating system's still doing the shutdown, so it's not gonna be surprised and ruin anything. I mean, obviously the programs that you're working on still might be interrupted, but the file system itself won't be ruined. So pretty much this key is 99% useless and you'll never use it, but still cool to know about. Moving on to the pause break key. This one's actually still usable in some cases, but still rarely. For example, in the command prompt. Now what this is usually used for, and used to be used for especially, is if you were booting up in the BIOS, you could press the pause break key to be able to actually read what's scrolling down on the screen instead of going by too fast. And you can actually use this in the command prompt. If you're running a program, you press the pause break key, it'll either pause the text or pause the program altogether depending on the program itself. So it's basically like it says, pause the thing or break which would break the program from running. So again, this is something that's useless 99% of the time, but maybe you can use it to show off to your friends or something like that. Although one shortcut you might wanna know about is if you press Windows key, pause, break, it'll bring up the system properties menu. So I guess that's kinda of cool to know about. Now let's talk about the navigational keys, which is the group of six keys plus the arrow keys, but we all know what those do, obviously. If you don't, I don't know what you're doing. Anyway, there's a couple on there that you might not know what they do. Starting off, we can talk about the home end keys, and these are actually pretty simple. If you press home and end, they typically move your cursor to the beginning or the end of the line that the cursor is currently on, whether you're in uh, Google Chrome or Notepad or Microsoft Word or anything like that, it does the same thing. Although I will say if you're in Google Chrome and you're not actually having the cursor anywhere, it'll move the page to the top or bottom. So you can use that 
has a very fast way of scrolling. But you can do a little bit more with some modifiers. For example, if you press Control Home or End, it'll move the cursor to either the beginning or the end of the entire document. If you press Shift Home or End, it'll highlight everything between either the beginning or the end of the line where the cursor is. And if you press Control Shift Home or End, it'll highlight everything between the cursor and the beginning of the whole document or the end of the whole document. So this could be useful in some situations, probably easier to just use the mouse unless you're trying to highlight a lot of stuff. Still could be useful to know about these. You probably don't use them too often. Next is the delete key. Not much to say about this. I'm sure you guys know about it. It's kind of like a backspace reversed where if you press it, it deletes everything in front of the cursor instead of behind it. I use it all the time. I'm sure many of you guys do as well. We also have the insert key, which I think is one that not many people use too often, except if they accidentally hit it and then it gets very annoying if you don't know what it does. Typically when you hit the insert key, specifically if you're in a word processor or something, it makes it so instead of when you type at the cursor, it inserts text, it actually overwrites everything in front of it. And fun fact, this is a great way to piss off your friends if they're typing something and they look away and you press the insert key and then the next time they go to type, it'll overwrite stuff that they're typing and they won't really know how to turn it off. I mean, it's probably the most frustrating thing ever. Just don't, don't be too evil and show them how to turn it off quickly after that. And the last of the navigational keys are the page up and down keys. Not much to say about these. I'm sure you guys know about this. It's just for scrolling up and down, basically. It acts a little bit different depending on the program. For example, in Microsoft Word, it might scroll down automatically to half or through an entire page. If you're on Google Chrome, it'll basically do the same thing. Just scroll quickly past instead of doing it smoothly like with a mouse wheel. But here's a fun fact for Google Chrome that you might not know about for scrolling. Instead of pressing the page up and down key, if you press the space bar, it'll automatically skip and scroll down to the bottom of what you currently see. So if you're reading a page, you can press space bar and it'll basically go to the next thing you can't see. Pretty useful if you don't have to keep scrolling with the mouse. Finally, we have the menu key, which I doubt many people use at all, but probably know what it does just from seeing what it does and pressing it. It basically brings up a context menu wherever your cursor is, just the same as if you had right clicked. It usually doesn't do anything more than that, so it's not particularly useful, but maybe if your mouse breaks and you're trying to navigate with the tab key or something, can be useful to just know about. Although I know there's a lot of keyboards that probably don't even include this key anymore. They probably replace it with a function key or something. Anyway, that should cover everything. If you're ever wondering what those keys do, now you know, although they're not exactly useful, I don't think. If you guys did find this video useful, let me know what you think down in the comment section if I messed something up or maybe you want to know about some other computer features that not a lot of people know about. That could be fun to talk about as well. If you want to keep watching, I'll put some other videos right here. You can just click on those. And also, if you want to subscribe, I make new videos every Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. Also, consider enabling notifications as well. Again, I'm looking forward to hearing from you guys. So as usual, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Have a good one.